Welcome to season two of Small Girl Big Talk, where we talk about all the big stuff in adulthood, like self identity, financial growth, career, relationships, or stuff like quarter life crisis or how to stop comparing yourself with others. I am your host, Wendy. And my hope for this podcast is for it to be a space where you find comfort and feel less alone in your adulthood journey. And I'm so excited to be back recording a new season, a new episode for you, because I like to think of this space as like my little sleepover club, where I come over here and tell you all the embarrassing or vulnerable things about myself as I navigate my own adulthood journey. And because I'm also kind of like a self-help junkie kind of person, I like to learn new stuff and explore new things. This would also be a space where I kind of share with you about the things that I've learned or, or things that I've tried and even maybe failed in the process of learning about life and navigating adulthood. And in today's episode specifically, we will be talking about self-improvement. Specifically, I want to talk about becoming the best version of you in the year 2024 or whenever you are listening to this podcast, the year really doesn't matter. Um, But if you are listening right now, if you are tuning in right when this episode goes on, Can you believe that three months in 2024 has already flew past? Like as you are listening to this right now, it's literally Q2 of the year. It's not even the first quarter anymore. And I'm really just trying to bring this like, where did all the time go? And talking about this, I have a very important question for you. And that is... Have you done anything that you set out to do or you said you are going to do in 2024? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. If you did, okay, I want to clap my hand over here. Let's, okay, that's, that's a bad hand clap, but good job. You are literally the top 9% of people who actually follow through their New Year's resolution, while everyone else either forgot about their New Year's goal one month into the year or one week into the year. So good job, kudos to you. And if you are like majority of the people who forgot about the New Year's resolution, it's okay. You're literally just like everyone else, so there's no need to feel bad about it. Um, For me personally... I'd say that I remember what I have set out to do, but I was moving forward really slowly. Like I was really doing things at my own pace at the start of the year because my life was just quite busy. Like it was the festive season, it was Christmas, and then it was Chinese New Year. It was also my fiancé Kevin's birthday and also my birthday and... At my day job, yes, everybody, I still have a day job because I need to pay my bills. I would love to be a full-time podcaster one day, but at this moment, I still have a day job and things are still really, really busy at my day job at the start of the year. Um, So as much as I enjoy doing my podcast and I was so looking forward to recording this, I did have to delay the launch of my second season as well because I just didn't have the capacity to do it. Um, If you were here last season, I actually mentioned that I was going to take a one to two months break before I come back, but I ended up taking a three to four months break. And that is because I was a one-man team doing this podcast. I'm the one who planned the podcast episodes, set up my studio, you know, quote-unquote studio here in my living room. I edit I publish, I promote, I do every single thing. And I'm not complaining. I'm just kind of like stating the fact that it does take quite a lot to be producing um, new episodes every single week. So 
I realized that I just needed to take a little bit more time to sort everything out before I come back stronger. Because I know that if I were to just push through and show up during the time when I was still feeling really stressed and I felt like I was not ready, I would end up feeling stressed very quickly or I would experience a burnout very quickly. So I was really taking things at my own pace. And that is actually kind of like the approach that I want to talk about self-improvement today, about what it means to actually improve yourself and become the best version of yourself. And how do we actually approach personal development? The first thing you need to remember is that self-improvement looks different for everybody depending on what season they are in. And just because someone else is going to the gym five times a week and meditating every single morning and journaling every day and they are still, you know, creating atomic habits in every single way, it doesn't mean that that is what you have to do in your own self-improvement journey. We are all different individuals with different experiences, going through different seasons in our lives. If you recently lost your loved ones, self-improvement might just mean being able to process your grief in a healthy way and just show up in your day-to-day life. If you have been having issues with your romantic relationship, self-improvement might just mean improving your communication skills and learning to express yourself in a healthy way or going for couples therapy. Self-improvement does not have to look a single way. It is different for everybody And in fact, right, sometimes I feel like with the growth of self-improvement content on social media, you know, we have gone from a season of all the hustle content out there to like the self-love that that girl era or like the healing era. There have been a lot of extremities when it comes to such content. And I felt like they are making self-improvement almost toxic to be consuming or to be living. Like I know the irony of it, that this podcast is considered like a self-improvement channel and I'm talking about how toxic self-improvement contents are, but I, I think you get what I mean. Like when it comes to consuming content on social media, especially now that it's our main source of information on the internet and everyone is trying to build their niche and to create content that speaks to people, sometimes self-improvement can become a little bit too toxic for us um, when we approach it with extremity. And so I want to remind you that self-improvement journey, it's really very individual. It's your own And you shouldn't let what people say on the internet affect how you choose to improve your life, affect how you choose to grow in your life. And let's talk about becoming the best version of you in 2024. Like, how would that look like then? I think one important question that you have to ask yourself right now is what season am I in at the moment? Yes, because self-improvement can look very different depending on what you're going through. So it's very important to kind of audit the season that you are in right now. Like perhaps in the last few years, you have been hustling so hard that you are experiencing a burnout and you don't really give a fuck about everything anymore. And this is a season of resting and healing or perhaps you have taken things slow in the last few years and you are ready to rise up again and that's the season that you are in or maybe things are tough in your family like you really have to be there for them and you got to sacrifice certain things in your personal life that could be it too like I think it's important to acknowledge where you are in 
instead of just going headstrong with where you want to be, like we cannot discount the life or the experiences that we are going through because they are very, very real. And if you are someone who is just not really self-aware, like if you are struggling to identify what season that you are in right now, um, here are some tips on how you can actually kind of audit where you are right now. So these are different areas of your life that you can rate where you are right now from 0 to 10. 0 being that it's pretty bad at the moment and 10 being it's very good at the moment. And by looking into it, you can kind of gauge an idea of which areas are more lacking in your life right now. And these 10 areas are financial well-being, occupational like career well-being, or environmental well-being like how's the space around you that you are physically around right now you know you can also measure your spiritual well-being like how are you doing spiritually and physically physical well-being it's something that most people are it's, it's like pretty obvious, like you can tell if physically you are unwell or you are just very unhealthy. And also um, creative well-being. Oh, that's, that's interesting. So I actually found this on the internet and I'm just reading it out loud right now. Like, do you feel creative at your, in your life right now? And we also have emotional well-being. How are you dealing with your emotions on a day-to-day -day basis? Or intellectual well-being. Do you feel like you are being intellectually stimulated? Like you are, are you still learning new stuff in your life? I think that's a good question for yourself. Um, social well-being, it's something that's very good to measure. Like are you maintaining good relationship with people? And also cultural well-being. Oh, what, what does this even mean? It says, cultural well-being is having the freedom to practice your own culture and to belong to a cultural group. Hmm. Like, I guess it's like how well do you assimilate to the culture that you are living in. So like I said, I found this on the internet and I'm reading it out loud. But what I like to do is actually put uh, measure every single areas of my wellness will and kind of get an idea. Like you should be able to see um, maybe that your physical health is getting very poor attention right now. So that could be an area that you want to focus in your season. And usually there should be a couple areas that ranks lower than others. And that would be a good place for you to kickstart your self-improvement journey. Um, otherwise, if all of them are in the similar ranking, I would suggest for you to start to improve your life through your physical wellness first. And the reason why I suggest for you to start with your physical well-being, it's because this body over here, it is the machine. It is kind of like the vessel that helps you to carry out your day-to-day -day life. And if the machine is not well taken care of, if it's not going through maintenance, or if it's not you know, healthy, it is very hard for you to carry out other aspects of your life. Like you would be, like it would be hard for you to think well in your day job. It would be hard for you to manage your emotions well. And I like to think that in your well-being journey, there's kind of like a domino effect when it comes to things. So for example, when your physical health is bad, you are constantly going to be in pain or you just don't feel good. And that is going to spill over to your mental and emotional health because constantly being in pain is not going to make you happy. And because you don't feel good, because you don't think good things, it is going to make you not want to go out to meet people or, or it's going to affect your relationship with people, thus affecting your social well-being. So like I said, there is a domino effect and I always feel like physical health, it's the easiest thing to get started with. Like when you start to work on your body, when you start to just eat healthier or sleep better, or just being a little bit more active in your day-to-day -day life by walking a little bit more, 
it is going to give you an overall lift in every other areas in your life as well. So yeah, like first tip is to really audit what season that you are in. And if you are unsure, use some guide to help you measure where you are in all these different areas in your life right now. And after you know where you are in now, then we can talk about where you want to go. I know some of you out there are still trying to figure out what is your life purpose or what do you want to achieve in your lifetime. And I think this is something that you can explore as you experience life and it changes as you grow older. But I think it will be helpful for you to just kind of set a baseline right now on what you think you want. And from there on, you move towards that goal you want to have. And if you realize that it's not exactly what you want, then you switch your path, right? So let me just give you an example. When I was in my early 20s, when I graduated from university, I did this exercise where I envisioned where I want to be in the next 30 years, which was at that point, 50 years old for myself. And then I reverse it to like 20 years from then, how do I want my life to look like? And then 10 years from then, how do I want my life to look like? And at that point, the vision that I have of myself at 50 years old is to be someone who is ready to retire. I was a mom with two kids and I have a golden retriever that I would spend time walking my dog in the morning that was the vision that I had of myself at 50 years old. And at 40 years old, I see myself to have a very successful entrepreneurial career. I was on stage speaking as a keynote speaker and I go home to a helper taking care of my kids. And, and so working backwards from it, at 30 years old, I see myself being uh, an entrepreneur, like a budding entrepreneur working on my speaking career. So I actually had that vision of myself. But as I move towards that journey and as I approach my 30s, I realized that I didn't really want that life anymore. At 31 years old right now, I honestly am not sure if I still want kids in my life because having kids also mean a lifetime of responsibilities and that means that I wouldn't be able to retire as soon as I'd like and I wouldn't be able to travel as many places as I would like. And so I am unsure about the direction that I'm going. But but having said that, I'm still very glad that I had some sort of a direction in my early 20s based on the vision that I had of myself at that point. Because without that, I wouldn't have gotten to this space in my life right now that helps me to realize, huh, I don't really want this. Because I was still progressing forward. Um, it's just that the new things that I absorbed and learned and experienced in the journey has helped me to shape my thinking into a different person and I would want a different thing right now. So I guess what I'm trying to say is if you are unsettled with the direction that you want to go, if you are still unsure about your goals, just don't be too obsessed with it. Have a clear vision and move towards it. But it's okay to change your path if things doesn't work out. So just work towards it. Because when you have a direction, it makes it a lot easier for you to decide what are your next steps at the moment. When you don't have a place that you want to go, you are just going to stay home every single day. But if you decide that you're going to have lunch at the diner down the road, you are going to leave the home and walk towards the diner. But maybe halfway through the journey, you pass by the sushi bar and you are like, huh, maybe I should have sushi today. And it's okay. If it's not for your decision to move towards the diner, you wouldn't have realized that you actually wanted to have sushi that day. So you see what I mean? Like you don't need to be too obsessed with where you want to go. Find something, decide on it. Maybe if you are lucky, it is where you want to go and you're happy with it. But if it's not, then it's okay. <laughs> you know, 
So um, that's how I would kind of like approach goal setting or becoming a better version of yourself or self-improvement. It's knowing where you are and what season that you are in in your life and then knowing where you want to go. And then you find the path that takes you from where you are to where you want to go. And I want to remind you this. Like we have a lot of time ahead of us and our journey to get to where we want to be, it doesn't have to happen as soon as possible. I think we live in an era where we are so used to instant gratification. Like remember when we were younger, it takes a few minutes to connect to the internet and now it's instant and it's constantly in our lives. We are too used to getting things immediately when we want through e-commerce, through the internet, right? And I personally am guilty about that too. I think in the journey of achieving my goals, I was pretty impatient in many areas. And something that I've learned is that we really have to remind ourselves to be patient. Like for us to go from where we are right now to where we want to be, it might not happen within this year. It might take a few years. But whatever it is, based on the season that we are in right now, we do whatever that we can to help us pave our way towards it. This year, because of everything else that you are going through, maybe it is the year that you are only going to build the foundation to prepare yourself to go towards where you want to go. And when the time is right, when the season is right, then you are going to have that breakthrough that you want to go through. So I just want to remind you to be patient in your self-improvement journey. So having said that, I think I kind of want to just segue into what we are going to be focusing on here at Small Girl Big Talk for season two. And this season, we are going to be focusing all on professional and financial growth um, in preparation for a marriage slash wedding season. So you are going to be expecting a lot of career talk finance talk. I'm not the best person to give you advice, so I'll probably bring in some experts or friends who can share different point of views about different things. But that is the season that I am in right now, and I am excited to take you along in this season with myself. Um, So what is going on in my life right now is that I've decided to have a wedding next year. But financially, I was in a very baby stage in my adulthood journey because I got into some credit card debt issue previous years. And last year, I finally paid off my debt. And I'm really going through the baby steps of building a new wedding fund and, you know, trying to learn to invest and create multiple streams of income and stuff like that. So I really want to take you on that journey with me. And, um, you know... Ultimately, I know that the adulthood journey, it's not so straightforward. I would be focusing on career, on finances, but I also know that there is no way that we are going to go through adulthood without our personal internal struggles or relationship struggles, especially since I am planning for a wedding. I am getting myself ready for the marriage life. So, Um, I'll probably sneak in some episodes talking about relationships as well. But I just wanted you to know where are we in in this season for Small Girl Big Talk. I am really excited to take you along in this journey of learning and maybe sharing about the stupid things that I didn't know about or the things that I've done. And yeah, I think that's, that's what this episode or this season is about. Um, if you are new here in my podcast, I do want to say that I'm very excited to have you here with me and thank you for sticking through the first episode of this season two, or I should say episode 26 of this podcast, because I aim to go long. I aim to hit my first 50th episode, a hundredth episode. I want to grow old with you, you know, like that's the vision that I have about this podcast. It's 
it's an adulting journey. So you guys are going to grow old with me. So be ready for it, okay? Um, be sure to share this podcast with your friends if you think that this is something that they are going to love. And feel free to follow me on Instagram. Say hello to me. I have a lot of exciting things uh, planned out for you for the rest of this season. And I will see you in my next episode. Goodbye.